Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about Lenz's Law, but this time in the context of Transformers. Okay, and before we get going, make sure that you have watched my previous video on Lenz's Law, and obviously, pre watching that one, you should have watched my Faraday's Law of Induction one before watching this one here. Obviously you have to watch it in sequence for it to make sense. Don't just try and skip the lessons, you must obviously follow the scheme of work here. Right, so Lenz's Law in the context of Transformers. Let's have a quick recap on what actually Lenz's Law is. Okay, so Lenz's Law, if you have forgotten, is the following. The EMF induced is such that it will oppose the change that it is experiencing. And this may mean that it creates a magnetic field to oppose the change, or it creates a force to oppose the change, yes? In the previous video, we looked at two examples in which we moved a bar magnet into a coil, or we drag a wire within a field. We look at Lenz's law in both those cases. But now in the context of transformers, we will look at it again. Okay, so um, over here on the right-hand side, you will see a transformer, yes? Hopefully you remember that this is going to be my iron block. This is the iron block over here. Here's my primary coil, here's my secondary coil. The primary coil is connected to an AC supply over here, yes. And on the right hand side, uh, the secondary coil is connected to a voltmeter over here. Okay, so from here, we're going to move from this diagram to this diagram over here. So I'll just walk you through it right now. So this is just a very simple diagram. We've got a cell, we've got a wire, but look, it's 3D. It goes, uh, this is the back of the wire, the dashed line is the back of the wire. And obviously the complete wire means it's in the front here. So it's 3D and it connects all the way to a switch and then back to the supply. Next to it I have a, almost the same thing again, but instead of having a cell, I've got a voltmeter right now over here. Okay, and you might not be able to see it, but if I rotate this diagram here, and rotate this uh, circuit over here, hopefully you can recognise this will be a coil, this will be another coil. Like the primary coil will be this one, and the secondary coil will be this one over here. Yes, it's almost the same thing, just rotated here. Right, so let's talk about the transformer first of all. So if you've forgotten how the transformer works, when current passes through the primary coil, what happens is, so let's say the current goes around this way over here, what happens is a magnetic field is induced. So what happens is, using the right-hand rule, uh, current going this way, field going down, we get a, uh, a magnetic field going this way over here. Yes, the magnetic field is induced in the primary coil. The magnetic field induced in the primary coil will then flow through the iron core and enter the secondary coil over here. Yes, and obviously the secondary coil experiences a changing magnetic field and therefore a voltage is induced. Hopefully we have that idea. Now we're going to talk about it in terms of this diagram now. Almost the same. So what happens when I connect the switch? Well, if I was to connect the switch, let's do it very slowly. Connecting the switch over here, first of all, we have um, the current goes up around the back, up around the back of the wire, down around the front, and uh, then goes round over here. Right, now, we should hopefully remember that when current flows through the wire, what happens is a magnetic field will be induced. So yes, using the right-hand rule, we know that. Do we, um, I always use, when I use the right-hand rule, my fingers at the front represent the wire at the front over here. So this is going to be my fingers at the front over here. So look, the current's coming down, the field's going to the right, everyone using the right hand rule. So I'm gonna use a, a green color to represent which way the field is going. There we go over here. Right, so the field is going um, all the way across. Now, don't forget, now this field won't just stop here, it will enter the secondary coil. So the field from the first wire will enter the secondary coil here. And then hopefully you recognize that the secondary coil is going to experience a changing magnetic field. Hopefully that makes sense because initially, don't forget the start, there was no field going through the secondary coil. And then we are going to have a field going through the secondary coil. So you now have a change in flux linkage. So the secondary coil experiences a change in flux linkage and therefore due to Faraday's law a voltage is induced. So let's just put that down over here. Okay so I'll put it all down in words right now from the start. So number one the switch is pressed. Okay so the switch is pressed and therefore current flows through the coil. Current will then flow through the coil. Therefore a field is induced in the first loop. A magnetic field is obviously induced in the first loop. 
The field then flows into the secondary loop. So obviously the field from the first one flows into the secondary loop over here. And then what does that mean? That means that the secondary loop experiences what? A change in flux linkage. The secondary loop is going to experience a change in flux linkage. And obviously if you experience a change in flux linkage, a voltage will be induced due to Faraday's law. So yes, a voltage will be induced due to Faraday's law. A voltage is then induced due to Faraday's law over here. So look, uh, you get a voltage, but don't forget the voltage would be a brief pulse. So the voltage will like, flick to the, to the right one side and then return back. So it flicks to one side and then it will return back here. So you get a brief pulse. So this will be a brief pulse. So a brief pulse is observed here, a brief pulse of voltage pulse of voltage here. Right, so a brief pulse of voltage is going to be observed here. So it flicks out one side and comes back again. Okay, so now we're going to incorporate Lenz's law into here. So look, we have the primary core right now and the field lines are going from the primary core into the secondary one over here. Right, due to Lenz's law, the EMF that is induced in the secondary coil will want to oppose the change it is experiencing. And the, what that means is the following. It means that if you have these field lines going from left to right into the secondary coil, the secondary coil creates its own field to oppose that change. So basically, it's like, imagine the field lines are going across, yes, into the secondary coil. The secondary coil wants to stop all these field lines going through it, so it makes its own field to oppose that change here. So it basically pushes back. So it makes its own field, here we go, to oppose that change over here. And look, there we go. This is the this is the so the purple is the field induced in the secondary core. Noticing it's opposing the change here. And then now we can determine which way the voltage will go in this circuit using the right hand rule. So don't forget my farm direction tells me which way the field is going. So it's going to the left, everyone. And then the, my fingers tell me which way the voltage will go. So look, it's going to go up around the front, everyone. Don't forget my fingers. I can just represent the front of it. So it's going to go up around the front over here and down around the back over here. Up around the front and down around the back. And look, therefore, if you just draw in this diagram, the voltage will swing one way. So don't forget, it's a brief pulse. Let's just say right now, it moves in this direction over here, swings out and goes back again. So it swings out for a bit and then goes back again. So brief pulse in that direction over here. So the voltmeter goes bang this side and back to the center. Okay, right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to do the following. What happens if I was to open the switch? So what happens if I was to open the switch? So now opening that switch over here, what's gonna happen? Well, obviously that means that the current in the primary coil will start to decrease. So the current in the primary coil is going to decrease. So therefore this field, which is induced in the first one, will start to get slower, yes, yeah? so it starts to decrease. So look, I've just drawn it a bit, a bit lower than before. But what will the secondary core want to do now? All right, so what will the secondary core want to do now? Now it's a bit different. Rather than having field lines entering the secondary core, you have the field lines being removed away from you. So once again, initially, the field lines were entering you and you wanted to oppose the change here. So they were moving towards you, you opposed the change due to Lenz's law. But now the field lines are moving away from you. What are you going to do? Well, you want to stop them being moved away. So you want to attract them back. So you set up your own magnetic field over here, trying to attract it back. So look, what happens is, I'm just going to have to erase these lines once again. Uh, the field, which is created, induced in a secondary core, is now going to swap direction because you want to attract it back now. So as you can see right now, look, the field is being reduced right now. So obviously this, uh, the B field is reduced. Yes, and over here, now you want to attract it back. So I'm gonna put that in words over here. So now, and then over here, we want to attract it back. So attract it back over here. So we want to attract it back over here. And that's the reason why the field swaps direction because obviously initially, so right at the start when you turn the switch on, you oppose the change, but then when you turn off the current, that field is decreasing, you want to attract it back over here. So you make your own magnetic field in the same direction. You make your own magnetic field 
in the same direction over here. And then, guys, you can just uh, then you can use the right hand rule once again. Look, so field now going to the right. Therefore, the voltage is going to go this way around now over here. So what happens is now the voltmeter, this reading over here, is going to flick to the opposite side now to flick to this side for a brief bit, brief pulse, this side, and then return back again, and then return back to the original position again. And that's what's going to happen here. Yes, this is a bit complicated, but hopefully it makes sense to you that number one, when you connect the switch, the field lines enter the second loop, and the second loop tries to oppose that change. It creates its own magnetic field to work against it. But when you turn off the current, what happens is the secondary loop creates its own field to attract that field back again. In both cases, Lenz's law is still applied over here. And hopefully this now makes sense in terms of the transformer over here, because this is like the primary loop and this is like the secondary loop. Obviously, I could have a giant piece of iron connecting them in between, which is going to be exactly like the transformer now. But hopefully you can see how the first loop, the current can flow through it, can influence the secondary loop here due to the magnetic field. And that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like subscribe button to keep my channel going and good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao and goodbye.